Hey YouTube, I wanted to go over a setup I have here going for the dual GoPro Hero 12s um, to get a 3D 180 VR video. Um, I'm just going to go through my workflow real quick and show what I have set up here. And to begin, we'll start with this mount here. This is a 3D printed mount that I found on Facebook. I'll put the STL file link in the description. I don't remember the creator's name off the top of my head. They did build it with a GoPro mount on the bottom, but just putting in my mount one time, I couldn't even get it all the way in and I had to cut it off. So it is very snug and don't recommend using that. I think what I'm gonna do to modify this is make it a cold shoe mount so I can put a light on the top of it. The light that's back here is really just for weight for the gimbal. I don't think it would work very well being behind the camera. So basically it's, um. A dual GoPro mount, it keeps them at a set pupil distance, keeps them very snug and secure, they're not falling out of this. And what I did is drill a hole, which ended up not being perfectly centered, but I drilled a hole and then on the bottom of the gimbal, of the this is a DJI RS3 gimbal here, I just put a screw through where there happens to already be a hole on the camera mounting plate. It was important to, let me recenter here. It was important to put it at the very tip of the mounting plate because anything overhanging at all, even anything at lens level, will show in the video. Like um, um, on the left eye, you'll be able to see the lens in the right eye on the very corner of the video. So you really don't want anything poking forward on it. And then to balance this on the RS3 gimbal, it was way too forward facing to be balanceable. So I did have to put some weight in the back. And in this case, I just put on a light that I had and that seemed to be enough to get it to balance perfect. And while I can have full motion here as well. And I can show here, it's pretty well balanced. Boom, I don't even have it turned on yet. So to do any kind of filming, I've kind of got an easy workflow here to make sure you can get everything perfectly aligned. When you turn on each GoPro, and this mount has holes put in the bottom for that, what this mount doesn't have is much in the way of audio availability here. So it'll be interesting. I haven't actually used the audio from it yet to see how good or bad that is. Um, but once you turn on the GoPros, what you want to do first is besides put them in a mode where they can record, in this case it's 4K, 8x7, um, 60 frames per second, you want to show the QR, uh, the QR time code to each camera to get them in sync. It helps to have a remote, but that's not necessary. It's just really hard to hit both of the buttons. Even the way this is designed, you can barely stick a finger in there. So using a remote is going to be a lot easier in the long run. At this point, you can turn on the gimbal, which is down here. And of course, you want to have the gimbal on horizon level mode. And let me show you here. <laughs> which it is not on. That's funny. I could have sworn I had the switch. I must have accidentally hit it. Oops. There we go. Okay, as you can see here, lots of range of motion. So if you start recording as is, you'll get them within a frame or two because of that QR code that I scanned. But if you really want frame accurate time code, um, a lot of people say to do the clap thing, but I find that even doing a clap, you don't necessarily get exactly on audio, especially if like one of your GoPros has a microphone attached to it. And an example of that would be my other setup here uses two medium odds. Um, and one of them will be plugged into the camera with a microphone. So it will have a different sound setup than the other camera. Hang on, there's a dog going up the driveway. <laughs> All right. Um, so then you can't really align them by audio because it is slightly different. 
So what you can do is, after you start recording, let me let my remote connect here. Okay, after you start recording, whip out your QR code again and show it to both cameras. Make sure both lenses can see it at the appropriate time. And what you're really focusing on on this is that NDF 60 number. You, you don't need the barcode necessarily to show the QR code. You just want that number to be visible. That way in Post and Premiere, you can line up your timeline and then move each clip until it is literally on the exact same frame. Um, and you know for 100% certainty that the two clips are perfectly aligned. Sorry for the noise behind me, I've got a 3D printer going next to me. But what I do in Premiere is align the two clips with time code and then I'll magnify it and choose a frame where I can see the NDF 60 number. And I'll flip back and forth between the two clips, um, taking note of the number. And then if you hold the Alt key, you can use the left and right arrow to move the clip left and right until you get the exact same NDF 60 number right down to the frame on both clips. From there, I'll trim the edges and export left and right eye separately, and they're good to import into Mystica. So once recording, you can move around, do what you need to do. I need to do a lot more testing to see how smooth this is. I haven't fully processed a video yet. I'm just doing this to show what I've been, basically what I've been doing on this setup. But now hopefully with the gimbal, I can Try doing some more things and have some motion involved. Boom. What you can't do <laughs> is if you put it in forward facing like this, can't do that on this gimbal because you're going to have an arm in the way. I guess if I took the arm off, it would work fine, but that is very useful to have. So let me face it the other way again. So when you're done recording, just hit stop on the remote. In Premiere, Using time code, you're going to get them aligned that way first. If you have multiple clips, it'll just make it easier. Um, and then you'll have to go through each different recording and make sure that you have that fine tune alignment because you show the QR code down to the exact frame and not have to worry about any clapping or anything. So that's my setup. Um, I'm going to post some samples from it here soon. It's just going to take me a day or two to get anything nice out of it. It's not exactly beautiful in Maine today, so we'll see. At least it's not raining still. Um, let me know if you have any questions in the description in the comments. Thanks for watching.